Hi, Lawrence Rust from Education Services here at Juniper Networks. If you're interested in learning more about APQOS, be sure to check out our Advanced Juno Security course. And APQOS also shows up on our Juniper Networks Certified Professional Security exam. So if you're pursuing a JNCIP SEC, you'll want to know it. For full details on the course, just visit juniper.net slash courses and search for the class. Now let's get to your Learning Byte. Welcome to Juniper Learning Bytes. My name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer in education services within Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the advanced AppQuas Learning Byte. All right, so first of all, what is AppQuas? A little bit of review. Now, if you watch the basic AppQuas Learning Byte, you'll know that AppQuas allows for application-based classification. And we're not going to go into that a big deal. If you're interested in that, please watch the basic app clause learning byte. So it's part of App Secure Suite, rate limiting, DSCP remarkings, forwarding class assignment, loss priorities, all based on the application. However, the part I really want to focus on in this learning byte is the fact that there's no bandwidth guarantee with app clause, and we need to use class of service functionality that's built into Junos with app clause to get that bandwidth guarantee. And we're going to show that. We're going to set up some uh, forwarding classes with schedulers. You know, in the demonstration, we're going to set a bandwidth guarantee for that. We're going to show you that it's actually going into that forwarding class, which in turn, it gets that bandwidth guarantee. And also, we're going to show some DSCP rewriting. So it's more advanced features with AppQuas that we didn't have in the basic AppQuas learning byte, just because there wasn't time to do that. So with this, let's talk about our example here. In the basic app quas learning byte, we had uh, the client on the left and the server on the right. And the server on the right is an FTP, SCP, NTP server. And in that basic app quas learning byte, we had a problem to where the users, the clients on the left, they were uploading too much FTP traffic to the server, choking out the other applications. And so we set up app quas to rate limit that to three megabits per second. And that allowed other traffic to get to the server, no problem. So we got that set up already. We have that going. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to use class of service in conjunction with app quas to remark those DSCP values because we now we have two SRX devices before we had one. And so we're going to use that. We're going to remark on SRX, the first one here on the left. We're going to do the remarkings there. So the second SRX device can use those remarkings those DSCP values, how they were remarked, to classify it right away. And then on top of that, we're going to place FTP and SCP traffic in different forwarding classes and give those different forwarding classes different bandwidth guarantees. So let's jump right into the command line. All right, here's that first SRX, SRX1. Let's jump into the configuration. I'm just going to show you the current class of service configuration. We just have application traffic control, just that app clause profile that we created in that basic app quas learning byte. Then we're going to jump into the class of service and we're going to configure some basic class of service stuff. So first of all we're going to configure the forwarding classes. We're going to set it up for Q5. We're just going to call this the FTP traffic Q. We're going to give that a priority of low. And then we're going to set up a forwarding class using Q6. We're going to set that up for SCP traffic. Give that a priority of high. Now we could use, we don't have to specify the custom forwarding classes here. We could use, you know, just the standard default forwarding classes with the standard default queues. But, but I did want to show you that you can do this and put it into its own queue. Okay, then let's set some schedulers. We're going to set a scheduler. Uh, we're going to call this FTP Sketch. And we're going to give that a transmit rate of guarantee. We're going to try to guarantee bandwidth of 2 megabits per second here. But we're going to give this a priority of low. Then we're going to set a scheduler for SCP schedule. We're going to give that bandwidth guarantee for the traffic we're going to put into this queue here. 
because we're going to map it later on, just here in a little bit, to those custom forwarding classes, where we're going to give SCP traffic basically a transmit rate of 10, you know, guarantee of 10 megabits per second, and then we're going to set that up to a priority of high. And then we're going to set some scheduler maps, or a scheduler map, we're going to just call this app quas map, and we're going to set the forwarding classes, the FTP forwarding class, to use the scheduler, FTP sketch, and then the SCP forwarding class to use the scheduler, SCP scheduler. And so that's going to map that. That's what's going to give us our bandwidth guarantees there. But we're not done yet. We configured class of service, but now we need to configure the app quads profiles. And we named it FTP app quads. Now it's going to be doing a little more than FTP, so we probably should rename that. To uh, we'll just name, rename that just to app quads, more general. Oops. We're going to edit that rule set app clause. Then, first of all, well, let's edit the rule one that's going to be working on FTP. Then we're going to, to actually change that, and we're going to set this to a forwarding class of the FTP traffic forwarding class. Now, this is cool, and this is cool for a few reasons that we can actually put traffic into a forwarding class based on the application. And the reason why this is awesome is the other options that we have to do here. This is, you know, basically an edge router that's on the edge of the network that's, you know, connecting right into, you know, the clients are connecting basically right into. It's probably their default gateway. And this, in our example, it is the default gateway because that's how I set it up. And with that, to actually do that, to get that into that queue, we would actually set up the DSCP values to be transmitted from the client machines, not a scalable solution. Or we could set up a firewall filter to grab any FTP traffic, to dump it into this forwarding class. However, that still doesn't work that well because with a firewall filter, we're looking at layer four information. We're looking at the ports and a savvy user could actually work around that, could actually transfer FTP traffic on port 22 and totally bypass our firewall filter with what we're trying to do there as far as putting it into the correct forwarding class. So this allows us to look at the application and put it in the correct forwarding class. And that's awesome. And then we're also going to set the uh, DCP code point values. We're just going to set that to one, basically, you know, just five zeros and a one. So that's convert that to decimal. That's one. And that's what we're going to do there with this rule. And then we're going to edit the next rule. I'm just going to call that rule two. We're going to match application Junos SSH. And that's because that's what we're going to be running uh, SCP over. Then we're going to set the forwarding class to that SCP traffic forwarding class. Set the DSCP code point value. Basically that's two in decimal. And uh, that's all we're going to do with that one there. We're not going to rate limit that traffic. We don't want to rate limit that traffic. And so that's our app quas profile, how that's set up now. And so then there's one last thing we have to do. We need to edit the policy, the security policy itself. Now, if you remember, oh yeah, we actually changed that, so we'll need to change that from FTP quas to app quas for the actual application traffic control rule set. But if you remember, if you did watch the basic app quas learning byte, we just set this up for application FTP. So we're actually going to rename this policy as well. Actually, before we do that, we can just use the replace pattern. This will save us some time. What do we name that exactly? Okay, so what we'll do is we'll do a replace pattern FTP QoS with, we'll just pull this right along. And so we renamed it, the policy, and also the rule set. One fell swoop there. But we do want to set the application, change the application, or add an application. So SCP traffic does hit this policy here, and which will send it to the actual app clause profile. Okay, so let's commit that now. All right, now that that commit is complete, let's uh, transfer some files. Okay, so let's get to the home directory here and transfer this test file. 
just doing FTP here so that speed is going to be limited and remember that this is showing in kilobytes per second and we're transferring at 3000 kilobits per second so this is about where we want to be we saw that in the basic learning byte so let's jump back to the CLI now see what's happening so to look at the forwarding class with what's going on there let's check out the interfaces it's the interface that we're using here and let's look at I want you to specifically look at the queue counters here we can see that the FTP traffic queue we're getting traffic in there let's look at that again Let's just match on FTP oops we can see yes it's definitely incrementing for that forwarding class we're definitely hitting that that's awesome so that would mean that we are going to be giving that a guaranteed bandwidth of two megabits per second with what we set up with a class of service with that forwarding class okay let's jump to this SRX 2 that other SRX we had in the topology now I want to show you this real quick. I uh, set up a firewall filter to match and apply that as input on the ingress interface. So we're going to be matching on DSCP values and counting those. So it's just a quick easy way to see if we're actually setting those DSCP values correctly. So let's look at the firewall counters. And we got packets there. That's a good sign. Let's see if it's incrementing. Definitely incrementing. That's exactly what we want. So what we'll do now is we'll jump back to that transfer and cancel it. Alright, that transfer is cancelled. Now let's do an SCP transfer. And see how things work there. So let's delete that old test file. We definitely don't want that. And then let's move it over again. Okay, you see the transfer happening? That's what we want to see. Let's jump back to the CLI. Okay, so let's look at those counters again. All right, so we see the SCP forwarding class, SCP traffic incrementing. So let's look at that a little closer. See if it's incrementing. It's definitely incrementing. It's incrementing quickly because we don't have a rate limiter on that. So that means that we are reserving 10 megabits per second of bandwidth because we're dumping into that queue that's got that bandwidth reservation. So let's jump to SRX2. Let's check out the firewall counter. Yeah, that's definitely incrementing. So we're definitely sending it along with the correct DSCP value. That's exactly what we wanted to see. So this does bring us to the end of this learning byte. You know, we discuss some functions of AppQuas, uh, and then we demonstrated AppQuas rate limiting features and other AppQuas features as well with class of service features and how that worked together. And we saw how we could use AppQuas to put that into a forwarding class and use class of service to reserve that bandwidth. It was really cool how that worked. And so it all worked out well. So yeah, that's the end of this learning byte. And as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.